Thank you, Mr. Senate President. You know, as I was getting ready for the budget today, um, I couldn't help but think about my late father, who served as the budget officer for the Republicans for many years. And while I will associate myself with the comments made by the members of the Budget Committee, I'd like to make some general observations on this budget. But before I do that, I want to take a look back. When I was first elected to the Assembly in 2009, the budget was in tatters. I remember quite vividly my first budget vote in 2010. My father was the Republican budget officer, and I remember the huge cuts that had to be made to balance the budget that year. I remember as we went late into the night, the questioning that he took, because he was the author of the budget that year. It was the first time, I think, that the minority party author, authored the budget. And I remember the questions and, and the comments that were made. How could the state survive when we were cutting the budget to that extent? And we went through the same thing in the assembly. And I stood up, and it was my first time standing up on the floor, and I remember saying that for the first time I thought the state had recognized that we can't spend what we don't have. Those were tough times, and the years to follow were just as tough. Fast forward to today. We've got a budget flush with cash. What a difference a pandemic can make. Add to that $4.3 billion in borrowing, which was unnecessary and ill-advised, buckets of cash from the federal government in the way of billions of dollars of stimulus money, and revenues that are far exceeding expectations. All of a sudden, we have more money than we know what to do with, and we certainly are looking everywhere to see where we can spend it. It is certainly a governor's election year budget dream. But perhaps the governor planned it that way. Now with $46 plus billion plus in state spending, anyone can look at this budget and find some good things. In fact, a few of them were mentioned here today. But the problem becomes what's not in this budget. No meaningful long-term tax relief for our residents that face the highest property tax burden in the nation. Yes, there's a homestead rebate. But what happens next year as we start to get back to normal? There are some other tax programs that will benefit our residents. But really, aren't we just nibbling around the edges? There's no meaningful investment to revitalize our economy. Those aren't my words. Those are the words of the head of the New Jersey State Chamber, Tom Bracken. In fact, as our my minority leader rightfully pointed out, in a few days our businesses will face yet another tax hike in order to replenish the UI fund. There's no meaningful debt payment. Yes, we've established a mechanism to put money for a pay-go program going forward, but those decisions will be made by JBOC, not by the legislature and out of the public's view. Yes, there's money for some debt payment, but that's at the discretion of the treasurer, and there's no plan as to what debt will be reduced or when it will be reduced, if at all. There's no restoration of the millions of dollars in cuts 
to the three largest school districts in my legislative district. That will result in direct property tax increases to my constituents, especially when you consider all the expenses they incurred as a result of COVID. And probably the worst is there's no significant investment in the state's IT infrastructure. You don't have to look too far back to remember the lines we saw at the Motor Vehicle Commission agencies. And my office is still handling hundreds of UI claims that haven't been able to be resolved. The Department of Labor alone suggested a need of $200 million just for that department. The statewide allocation is probably about $60 million, if I understand the budget correctly. Clearly, we are just kicking the can down the road. If there was ever a time to build a foundation for the future, now is the time. We had an opportunity to do so much, so much more in this budget. So much more. And I think we've missed the boat. I'm afraid that we will be back here next year after all of this spending with nothing to show for the money we've spent. And that's unfortunate. And as a result, Mr. Senate President, I cannot support this budget today. Thank you.